Welcome to Reimagine the Contact Center. I'm your host, Mark Bernstein, and my guests today are James Deal and Mike Mixon, founder and CEO at Textel and chief revenue officer at Textel. Mike and James, how are you guys doing? Good. Doing well. well. Good. You know, the only other St. Louis contact center engagement platform company that that I know. So we're uh, uh, kindred spirits in some ways. Uh, Really good to have you guys on and good to see you again. Yeah, good to see you, Mike. Hey. Yeah, really happy to be here. Good yeah, you, so I noticed that you guys both share uh, a pretty interesting background in common uh, before we, we kick into the, the main subject today, and that is that you guys came from Gravity Payments. And uh, most people probably have heard of or seen uh, them in the news um, and Dan Price in the news because he was the a fellow who introduced the 70K minimum wage for all employees at Gravity. And uh, you were both employees at Gravity. So uh, what was that like? What's, what's the experience been like? <laughs> well, um, so I'll, I'll take that one, uh, Mark. And I, I, I have a tendency of dragging Mike into things. So I, I brought him to Gravity. <laughs> and then, and then I, I said, hey, we've got a great texting business. Why don't you come and help us start this? But, but as far as Gravity goes, um, so my, uh, Dan is my cousin. And so Dan and Lucas Price are brothers. And we, we started in uh, payments many years ago. And uh, as, as we grew, Dan uh, took a primary role in the company and had this idea one day of, of offering, you know, and, and if people are familiar with it, they know the backstory and how it goes, but had a great idea uh, to really show employees that we care about them and to really help to, to grow good employees as well with, with those, that set of expectations, but, but also, you know, being intentional and I, in the culture of the company. And that has been very successful at Gravity. And of course, Dan, is, as you know, has kind of taken that on and, and continued to crusade for that in, in a very prominent way. And, um, but uh, as far as that's gone at, at Gravity, it's gone very well. And there's certainly aspects of that that uh, I think Mike and I try to apply when it comes to building a really uh, strong culture, a culture that cares about each other and a culture where people want to be and where they're cared for both for who they are, but also for, um, for their physical needs as it relates to, you know, their salary and the money they make. That's awesome. So, so you guys started Textel and uh, what an incredible company, Uh, you know, maybe you could talk a little bit about, uh, you know, what Textel does and then, um, you know, what did you bring from your experience at Gravity, uh, something that, that you feel like uh, did contribute to the culture you guys have built at Textile? Well, I'll say what we brought from Gravity maybe a little bit because that was kind of some of the impetus of what got us started. And then I'll, I'll let Mike kind of dig into what we're doing really. But um, one of the reasons that, that Textile came to be was because uh, at Gravity, I was very interested in tech-enabled, tech-enabled payments, tech-enabled solutions, and, and uh started looking at what, what other things were out there and came across this idea of text enabling existing business landlines. Um, this is a, actually has a pretty big day for that in the news. If you've been looking at the news lately, um, the company that I came across at the time was ZipWhip and um, ZipWhip was a little startup in Seattle that was that had kind of come up with this technology for text enabling business landlines. So a salon or a spa or a retail store car dealership or a contact center could text enable their existing business phone number and uh, and then start to communicate in two-way conversations with their customers. Um, that's how everybody was communicating. And this seemed like something that was going to be ubiquitous. And so what attracted to me about it was just like credit card processing was ubiquitous across every industry. Every, every company has to accept payments. So every company I thought would need to be able to text with their customers as we moved forward with, with digital. And so, so that's what kind of really drew me into it and, um, and kind of what got us going saying, hey, this is a very similar industry. The regulation is kind of similar. The players, you have the card brands and you have the carriers and you, you have a lot of similarities between payments and texting. And so that's why I got really interested in it. And, and Mike got involved in it and, and we kind of have grown it into, you know, to what it is today, which I, I'll let Mike speak to that a little bit. Yeah, so what's interesting is the, um... James, I don't know if you wanted to share the news from today, but uh, I meant to. I, I kind of like buried the lead there, but there you go. Go ahead and share it. <laughs> yeah, so ZipWhip, ZipWhip was just acquired by Twilio today for eight hundred and fifty million dollars. So it, or it it just was announced today. Um, um, so so yeah, this this little startup that we kind of connected to um, back when they were very small and were just building out the network. 
uh, really grew up and I think it's a pretty big day for texting in general, uh, business texting, um, that they were able to grow that from, you know, a startup in the CEO, John Lauer's basement into what it is today. What was really monumental about ZipWhip and the reason I think that when James came to me the, with the idea, um, I decided to leave the company I was at and jump in uh, was, you know, ZipWhip really took the concept of business texting to the next level. Um, up until ZipWhip, really, if you're a business and you wanted to text, you'd have to use a short code. It's like a five or six digit number. <clears throat> and uh, short codes are primarily designed for campaigns. They're designed primarily for one way outbound. There's a lot of limitations and there's a lot of expense and um, it's very time consuming to set up a short code. So the CEO of, of ZipWhip, Lauer had this vision for setting up a network, a business network, you know, where you could text on an existing business phone number. So, you know, VoIP um, and toll-free numbers, uh, whether it's local area code or, or toll-free. And so they really built out this network. And when James introduced me to the idea of Textel, it was, hey, let's go text enable business phone numbers so businesses can text with their customers just like we text with each other, right? And that was really the idea of, hey, you don't need a weird text number as a business. Just text on your existing voice number, say caller text on your website. And that's very natural and makes sense and was kind of the easiest way for businesses to bridge the gap and dive into full, you know, two-way conversational SMS. Yeah, that, that's so cool. Um, and do you guys consider yourselves complementary to ZipWhip, com competitors? What is... Uh, if ZipWhip is enabling businesses to be able to text using this network versus the short code, uh, what is Textel? James, you want to start? Sure. So we we would see like I, I guess ourselves as like co-op. How, how do you how do you say that word? The, the Coopetition. Co Everyone's <laughs> Co saying that. It makes me a little <laughs> sick whenever I say it, but I'm also like it's the best term. <laughs> Mm -hmm. it, it is what it is. So uh, ZipWhip has the rails and, and then we provide the functionality on top of that. So if you think about, um, uh, you know, Twilio's approach to, in the same space, uh, there's there's various carriers out there. ZipWhip controls, as they've grown up, they control all the toll-free routing. And so, but we sit on top of that, that network and we provide the functionality and the integrations into the business software that businesses are using. And we have our own interface that users can also uh, send their blast messages out with and, um, you know, bat, bot functionality, all the things that businesses need to make SMS really work for them. Um, that's what we help them solve. That's what we do. So if you think of ZipWhip as the, as the rails and, and us as the train on it. <clears throat> yep. Yep. So one of the things that I think uh, would be awesome to focus on is what does the contact center world need to know about texting? Like what are the things that, that the contact center world doesn't know or that a lot of folks don't know that you're like, okay, here's the rub. Texting works like this. <laughs> a lot of pressure. Go for it. <laughs> That's a great question. James, you want me to take a stab? Yeah. You, yeah. You take that one because I think you, you were just on, telling me about that and how you were thinking about that. I think it's great. Yeah, you know, it's going back to the to the ZipWhip and how we're different, you know, ZipWhip developed this incredible network, you know, that really that anyone could build on, on existing business phone numbers, local and toll free, uh, which it was awesome. And the reason that we jumped in, but what we realized is that Contact Center as an industry didn't really have a way to solve for SMS. Um, you know, all of the rails were there, but when it came to kind of the front end features and functionality that a contact center needs, um, SMS was very difficult to integrate. You know, if you think about SMS, it's an asynchronous, you know, uh, interaction type. You know, you can, on a web chat, you might sit on a browser and you're, you're chatting back and forth and you're sitting there looking at that browser, waiting for a response and you're very engaged. SMS, as you guys know, we'll send a text, put our phone down, do something, navigate to another app and, and forget, you know, that we even had a text conversation going. So, you know, how do you solve for an asynchronous conversation type with a contact center that's very focused on packaging up every interaction into a nice and tidy, uh, you know, box? And so that's where Textile saw an opportunity to come in and say, hey, if the future really is, you know, let's take the call out of call center. And if the future could be with the contact center completely messaging forward, 
then the only way to do that is to solve some of these problems and actually allow a contact center to say, we're 100% we're diving in on SMS. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so that's really where we focused our platform. We have worked really hard to solve things like, you know, the asynchronous nature of texting, you, you know, using, using routing, using agent claiming, using conversation memory. So that even if agent A was talking to a customer, customer, you know, went dark, agent B could pick right there back up where agent A left off if that customer texted back in several hours or even a day later. Uh, so we've worked really hard to solve that asynchronous nature. And then at the same time, disposition and report on every interaction in a way that a contact center is used to consuming. So it's been a very big focus of ours to say, we don't wanna just do SMS, but we wanna solve SMS for the contact center so they can actually start diverting voice traffic over to digital. And what we found around this was that these, these contact center platforms or CCASs, obviously, uh, they, uh, they had voice really figured out. They had web chat really figured out and email, and they just hadn't gotten to SMS yet. They hadn't tackled it and hadn't figured it out. And there was a, a, a pretty blue ocean around doing this really well because this is where communication was headed. You know, there's now talks about messaging first contact centers. Like, why can't we be proactive and reactive on messaging and set voice aside to some extent even? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I heard you guys mention uh, routing, agent claiming, and then I, I think the uh, uh, the third word you used was uh, shoot, I can't remember. Conversation memory. Uh, conversation yeah. memory. Mm -hmm. um, could you overview those three parts of texting, like what it is and why each matters? Sure. Yeah. So if, you know, if you're a contact center, routing is every day for you, right? You've got to know where to route every interaction, which department, which agent you know, which skill. And so when you talk about SMS, you need SMS to fit into your existing routing, right? If you're going to skill an agent for, for, you know, voice and SMS at the same time, then the routing has to talk to each other because if you've got an agent on the phone, they shouldn't be available for SMS at that time. So we worked really hard to tie our routing into the existing routing of a contact center. And that's where James just mentioned some of our integrations our integrations into CCAS and, and, and uh, you know, contact center software partners was critical because if you're a contact center and you've got all these agents skilled for voice chat and email already, you know, and you want to integrate SMS, the routing needs to not bump into each other. It needs to, to align and run parallel. Um, so that's a really big piece of what we do and what we solve for with SMS. And then on the agent claiming side, yeah, and then so claiming is really, you know, coming down to uh, each interaction, right? So, you know, an SMS comes into a contact center, it routes to the right agent with the right, right skill, they claim the conversation, that means they own that interaction, you know, as much as we like team tackling and what that means, there is value in a relationship, right? An agent to a customer and being able to build even in a, you know, 90 second interaction. And so we, we like the idea of claiming and for an agent to own that conversation. But then if the agent, you know, if the conversation starts going long or if the customer, you know, goes dark, let's say, they're able to easily close the conversation and, um, and disposition it. And then if that customer texts back in, we try to route it right back to that last agent. Um, so we do as much as we can to keep, you know, the agent to customer relationship really strong. Another part of claiming that we've addressed uh, is this idea that sometimes the call center wants messaging or whether anything inbound to be routed to agents. Other the times they want their agents to be a little bit more proactive and they want them to be able to go in and say, oh, this is an important conversation. I'm going to take it right now and I'm going to own it until I release it later rather than just routing to the next available agent. Um, and that typically is more in like a sales type of environment uh, versus just a, a responsive uh, customer support scenario. But these are the different types of, of requests that are, are coming in from businesses as they start to say, okay, we know we should be using SMS. How do we use it? Yeah, it's funny. I'm, I'm starting to uh, see that you guys are, are developing something like texting as a platform. I don't know if TAPS seems like a terrible <laughs> acronym, um, but, I, but I see it. Um, and I see why you're pulling together all these use cases and integrating it into the current infrastructure. Um, totally awesome. 
uh, you know, texting is something that's top of mind for everybody right now. Um, as folks are saying, well, we want to go omni-channel. Cool. What does omni really mean? And uh, they go, oh, chat and phone. And it's like, no, 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 like omni-channel. So, you know, what have you guys seen um, our customer preferences for when they want to engage with text? Yeah, I think normally people just want it to be like they text with each other, right? Like, you know, you don't have to teach us how to text as consumers. We, you know, my kids know how to text. Um, it just comes built in, comes built into your phone. It's ubiquitous. You get a phone and you start texting. So I think when you're texting a business and you have weird rules like, oh, we can only text you first. Or when you text us, you can't then touch that number and call it, right? Because it's a different number. Or, you know, you can't, you know, um, text during certain hours, right? That's when, that's when I think consumers get frustrated. So our, our goal has been to make it as simple as texting each other. Um, and so allowing, you know, that, you know, going back to the whole ZipWhip conversation, allowing customers to text the existing business phone number, same number they could just say, hey, I'd rather call and just touch that number and call to escalate to voice if they need to. Um, you know, and then allowing, allowing the agent to text back and forth, you know, things, simple things like it's funny, but emojis go a long way, you know, sending a little gift or an image or, you know, a URL, um, you know, a lot of texting in the past was limited to uh, file types. And we've tried to pretty much unlock all the file types that we would use to text each other with. Yeah, I totally love that. Um, it, it's funny, you guys uh, know that somehow our generation has developed a rule that if you uh, end your text on a period, it means you're mad. <laughs> and, and I wonder if that has translated to the business texting environment, because I could imagine someone goes, oh, we're a business. We're very professional. We use perfect punctuation at every moment, and we can't overuse exclamation points because then it feels disingenuine. But you know, do you feel like businesses are open to the full beautiful monster that is texting with emojis and with dot dot dots like our parents do that scare the crap out of us or the k like you know how how open are businesses to the all the the rules of texting or are they trying to treat it like every other uh channel that's a good question yeah I, you know it's it's kind of fun to watch businesses jump into texting because i think at first they go yeah like you said mark they go let's make let's keep it really formal and they always ask us what's the character count right we want to you, you know they want to like send an email over text and um and and we always kind of tell them like hey you don't have to treat text like you do email abbreviations and you know um kind of common shorthand is okay over sms it feels almost more personal and real yeah. Um, so it, it's fun to watch the evolution of someone who starts and then as their conversations go, they begin to be much more casual. Um, mm -hmm. it really does depend on the demographic of their customer. You know, we have, you know, some that are medical customers, you know, texting, you know, a demographic that really does require a more formal communication. And then we have others that are very casual in their offering and their customer base. Yeah, I think too, the, you know, we haven't talked about it yet, but I'm sure we will, but chatbots, uh, chatbots mm -hmm. play, are playing a bigger and bigger role. And it's funny, we, you know, we usually start, okay, here's a chatbot, it does what you, you want it to do. And it's great. And then, then we get the, wow, this is really working well, but, you know, could we make it more personal? Could we make it just a little bit more real? Could we make, you know, all of that? And, and so, yeah, you definitely see as businesses start to, like Mike was saying, use the SMS, they start to in, want it to be used like they use SMS. I think it's a giant brand opportunity there. Giant, right? And I, I don't know if this is ever actually feasible. I thought about this the, 10 seconds ago, but imagine if you could like text with Burger King, you know, like I would text Burger King and, and in some cases, Burger King, I would text them something useful and I'd be like, oh, hey, where's the nearest Burger King? I wouldn't do that because I use Google Maps. But a lot of cases I'd be like, yo, I love that impossible Whopper. And if Burger King texted back and was like, thanks, dude, have a great day. <laughs> like, I think that would be like really enjoyable. And I would be a brand ambassador. So obviously mm -hmm. you got to kind of constrain uh, those scenarios. So you don't just have uh, this giant cost center that you open up. 
Um, but I think the opportunities to have this like personal branded interaction um, are really special over text. You know, what are some of the opportunities you guys are seeing? That's a great question. Yeah, the, the, so we have customers that um, use a text bot. We call it a text bot. Um, so use a chat bot over text. And like James said, what they start wanting is like, let's make it personal. And they almost always want to name it. Like, let's name it, I think one of our customers names it Phil. Let's name it Phil, you know, and let's give Phil a little bit of an edge. Let's make him a little sarcastic, you know. And so there starts to be this personality taken a little bit, which often equates to the brand and what the brand sees their, you know, persona as. Um, so it's kind of fun to see that take legs. What we like to keep, keep the chatbot focused on is solving, um, you know, specific business cases, right? If you, if you offer, as you, get, as, you, as you know, Mark, if you offer a chatbot to do everything, you know, people will break it within the first 30 seconds. But if you, you know, make it do just a couple of things that are very specific, then you can kind of give it a personality, but still give it a very specific function so it accomplishes it and, you know, pulls it off well. Yeah. I, I think uh, if you offer any sort of bot, and, and I don't know how automated uh, Textile is or what your guys' bot capabilities are, um, but anything that's a purely automated bot, um, we have to be realistic about, you know, where, techno where, where the technology is and where it isn't, what it can handle and what it can't. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the the beauty the beauty of a human mind is that you have the cognitive power to uh, you know see patterns that have not yet presented themselves before, and you go oh this scenario is like all these others, and even though there's all this complexity, I can kind of just pick out the most important thing and pursue it, um, and it's very difficult uh, for you know any sort of AI or you know automation to do. Um, so you're going to have this big portion always, um, and, and it'll get smaller and smaller over time, but this big portion of interactions that um, aren't addressed or handled or don't have first interaction resolution or, or uh, you know, whatever, however you're thinking about it. Um, so, so I wonder, do you guys feel like text is a better channel to get your, uh, you know, question resolved on the first go? Is it just another channel and equivalent? Is it, you know, worse? Like, how do you guys see text as a channel for getting stuff resolved uh, up front and right away? So I would say that SMS is great for the, those simple kind of quick questions. As something gets more complicated, especially if you're using a bot, that becomes more difficult for some of the reasons you just, you just outlined there. One of the beauties of SMS is that there's this, this you can easily move from a uh, engaging messaging experience with a bot to the same thing with a human seamlessly and, and take it into, and then even at that point, you can escalate it to in the contact center uh, environment and you can escalate it to a phone call if it gets to that. But it's, it's a very low barrier of entry to begin that, that, that interaction with the brand that you're, you're trying to work with or with the business uh, by starting with messaging. It's you know, a simple, everybody knows how to do it. It's simple, but you can escalate from a, a bot, for instance, to, to a human uh, over SMS to even a human in, in voice if the conversation gets even more um, complicated. And that, that is something that we work very uh, aggressively at making sure that, that that seamless transition can occur easily in those conversations. Mm -hmm. I think it's a good point, James. When it's, you know, text is great because it's simple. Um, it's easy, it's straightforward. You know, so, so for conversations that have a very straightforward purpose, it can be outstanding. Um, but another great benefit of texting is, you know, you're trying to get somebody on the phone and you keep trading voicemails and you can't reach them. Well, send a text and just say, hey, when can I call you? <laughs> you know, like just use it almost as a gateway to another medium at times just to simplify and get through. You've been emailing somebody, but they're not responding. All of a sudden you send them a text and within, you know, 90 seconds you get a text back. Um, so, you know, there's, there's value in the actual interaction itself, but also just the touch point. Totally so, agree. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Mike. And I was just going to, I was just going to oh, add. Um, so as we mentioned earlier, before we kind of came on the air here, we were talking about um, our, our presentation at uh, nice and context interactions conference upcoming. 
And we're, we're presenting with Pearson Education, who we just finished a, a white paper with. And one of the things they did is they moved from a voice first campaign to their, um, the people they were trying to reach, their students, to a digital first campaign, which was primarily SMS. And they saw a 200, over 200% 200 increase in the contact rates. Uh, just by moving to SMS as that initial interaction. And, and what they're trying to do is get that into a, a conversation. But sometimes it was just easier to schedule an appointment, as Mike was just saying, over text first before the conversation occurred than it was trying to call to set an appointment at a later time. So mm -hmm. just the ease and the added uh, availability of that SMS channel within Contact Center is, is game changing in some cases. The ability to do a quick response, I think, is also game changing that um, you know, you're giving somebody, uh, you can even think about uh, you know, when we receive texts from like political campaigns and it says, you know, to not receive this anymore, hit stop or reply yes, or reply no. And you pick up your phone, you go boop, 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 and that's it. Yep. So I think that that power is, is true for customers as well. Um, you know, at Balto, we actually just uh, doubled the size of our sales team about two or three weeks ago. Um, uh, That's just awesome. <laughs> thank you. It's uh, it, we went to a Cardinals game and it was freaking awesome. Um, and we brought on one of these uh, new account execs, and he asked the question, you know, as we were doing our onboarding, uh, how often do we text uh, our executives and our champions? And you know, the existing account execs kind of raised their hand. They said oh, a little bit, and he said, like, I think we should have a texting relationship with every single one of our champions, and. Um, like when he said that, I was like, of course, <laughs> of course, it's like one of the easiest ways for them to be able to reply, can't meet tomorrow, but can on Monday versus an email when you're in a queue of a hundred or, or 200 other emails, very difficult as an executive to prioritize that. So anyway, I think you can kind of take that, uh, logic and bring it over to the consumer world as well and say, mm -hmm. you know, who's in your texting inbox, your mom, your brother, your sister, your friends, who's in your email inbox, um, that new deal that you were looking for on Zappos, that, uh, you know, Etsy uh, person you've been following, the, uh, you know, political campaign that's reaching out again, saying that, that they're about to run out of money and need your help. Um, you know, <laughs> so if you think about the, the competition in the inbox, I actually think that it's much easier to yeah. break through the, the fray with, with text than it is with, you know, honestly, any other channel. Yeah, I agree, Mark. And I think what you've seen, even, you know, in the last 10 years since, um, you know, ZipWhip really built out this business texting network is it used to be a little strange to get a text from somebody in business. Um, it, it's not anymore. It, it's very common, you know, and I think even since COVID, we've seen that accelerate even more because, we are not face-to-face -face anymore like we used to be. And so texting just consumer to consumer has skyrocketed, um, much less texting from business to consumer. So it's more natural now than ever to get a text from a business uh, and to have a relationship with the business over SMS. Do you guys uh, remember when uh, Apple released, I think they called it like the an emojis and you could, you know, make your mm -hmm. face like a, like a little rabbit or something. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, I, you know, everyone was really excited by it. Everyone was like, oh, maybe it's a little gimmicky. People were excited because uh, in part it was an evolution of the texting channel. And I think Apple has done such a good job with it with the red receipts and, um, you know, the dot, dot, dot to show um, that text is pending. Are there any evolutions of the texting channel that you guys are seeing that you're excited about right now? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, and, and really, so Apple now has Apple Business Chat, which is uh, kind of the next level of connecting uh, businesses within the iMessage ecosystem. But beyond that, you know, Android has always been a little bit more um, disjointed when it comes to the SMS experience. You might have a Verizon messaging app, you might have the Android message, depends on what phone you buy. And so, but what's coming down the, the pike and has for, for a while now is RCS, a rich content service, which is going to allow Android to really be more like that rich um, messaging experience that you are more familiar with from, from an iPhone or from iMessage. 
but it's going to allow it on the Android. And, and, and really, those of us here in the United States, we think, well, isn't Apple the only device? Well, I think they have like 60, 70% market share here, right? But, but if on the other rest of the world, it's like completely flipped. Uh, you know, there's about 20% market share. It's all Android devices outside of the US. And so this is a, a game changer for, for, for the world, really. And, and this will allow things like when you, you, know, you can text American Airlines and change your seat and they're going to send you a seat map and you're going to press a button in your messaging app that's going to select the seat, not have to text back, oh, I would like seat 2A, please, or, you know, 22B, whatever it is. It, it's going to be much more interactive. And so think like, messaging, think apps inside your messaging app, that kind of app-like experience. And that's kind of where Apple's headed. That's where RCS is headed. And so that's the kind of stuff we're trying to stay on the front forefront of and be able to provide that kind of cutting edge messaging uh, solutions to our customers. Super cool. Uh, let's talk anon- anonymity. There we go. Got it. Uh, anonymity. Because I think that uh, back in the day, people used to feel more anonymous on the internet Um, where they went up to a website and they chatted on the website and they said, I could come or leave and this person will have no clue who I am. Um, And I think that's started to change where people go, oh, my IP address is being tracked. There's, uh, I have cookies on my browser and there's an awareness for the fact that you you are less anonymous than you had thought on the internet. Um, So I'm curious uh, how that has played out in the texting world, because I think that it used to be that, oh, geez, I'm not going to give anyone my phone number. That's like a, a very personal piece of information I could never relinquish. And I think now per- people perhaps feel like it's out there. And if all they have is my phone number, they don't see the other websites I was on or, you know, or you know, what I where my geographic location. I'm fine with that. So have you guys noticed um, any particular privacy considerations uh, for better, for worse, uh, around the texting channel. Hmm. So, so privacy is is interesting. Obviously, uh, you know, you could back into who somebody is from their mobile phone number. I mean, there there are ways to kind of, you know, identify get get I personally identifying information through the mobile phone number. But most people have have I think have come to the point where they're that's some that's a piece of information they're willing to share. Um, because it's becoming the way that they want to be contacted. So yes, I want to receive text alerts about my flight. Yes, I want to receive text alerts about your, your um, you know, Chipotle rewards program. Yes, I want to uh, let you reach out to me and, and ask me a question in the future, or I want to be able to text you and ask you a question. Um, and, and so what really is probably the more important issue is it, as around texting is, is spam. And is around keeping it uh, a safe, um, respected way of communicating that doesn't get abused. And Textel, as well as you know the other players in the space, are really committed to making sure that there are that the bad actors are kept from being able to spam. Now that said, there's been a huge increase. It just me and my personal phone. I'm getting a lot of text spam, and I don't know, Mark, if you've had the same experience lately. And there's, you know, of course, text back stop that, you know, the more people that text back stop and those spammy, uh, when, when spam's happening, the carriers will start to block those phone numbers and they'll be able to identify those bad actors. Um, there are ways to report uh, spammers as well. There's a short code you can report to, but that's really what I think is really important and critical for us in our space right now to help consumers continue to appreciate and utilize this um, uh, this mess- method of communication of SMS and allow businesses and consumers to have that um, respective relationship moving forward. Yeah. Do, do you hear businesses feel like if the customers on text that they're at a disadvantage in some way because they don't have some of the information? Do you hear any of that at all? I wouldn't say we have, Mike. Is that something you've run into in the sales process? No, I don't think so. Um, you mean who, who would be at a disadvantage, Mark? I guess uh, the, the question was, you know, if I'm a business and someone comes to me through chat, um, I probably have their geography. Uh, mm. I, they may mm. even have to put their name in the chat to start the chat. Um, mm. I have their IP address. I often have if they're a, a repeat visitor or return visitor. But if someone launches a text message, 
um, I, I guess you do have if they're repeat texture or not repeat mm-hmm. texture, mm-hmm. but it, it seems like maybe some of the deep internet data is, mm-hmm. is not there. So, um, you know, do you, do you ever hear people say that, um, the interaction, the data that you receive isn't as rich or that you're not going to be able to, um, you know, put it into your analytics in as useful of a way or, you know, get as deep of a, of a look into the voice of a customer because you're on text versus another channel? Yeah, yeah, good question. Um, you know, it, we have um, customers that, certain customers that really want that type of data. Typically, it, you can accomplish it within SMS, um, you know, just like you would uh, over, let's say, web chat. Um, normally, it just requires a question right at the beginning. So, you know, you can ask them identifying information, whether it's customer ID number, um, whether it is, you know, uh, email address. Uh, we do a lot of database lookups to existing um, system of records. So whether it's Salesforce or, you know, Zendesk or wherever their record might, their, their, their system of record might be, we can use that mobile number as a unique identifier to look up any existing data they might have. Uh, but then another, another thing that people want to do is just put a simple URL within the text body and somebody clicks on it and now you've got all that same data, right? So, you know, it's pretty easy to direct someone to a, you know, to a, to a website through just texting the URL or hyperlink. Mm-hmm. I think there's also, there is still this um, very significant uh, expectation that SMS is a high priority mode of communication. So if we have somebody's phone number, we have something very valuable. If we can, mm-hmm. if we can reach out to them on SMS, that's a really valuable connection, um, mm-hmm. even more so, much more so than an email, um, and 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 a and a phone number from a voice standpoint. When nobody ever answers phone numbers, they don't recognize anymore. So mm-hmm. that's a super good point. Uh, it's funny; it makes me think almost the opposite of what I had posed a minute ago, which is someone comes on the chat and says hi, and then they leave. Like that's gone, <laughs> you know, uh, for the most part, that's gone. But if someone texts you, hi, uh, you have uh, their phone number. So it, and that's a unique identifier. So you can text them back later. And you have the ability to escalate to another channel proactively. You can say, oh, I've been Correct. texting this person back who said, hi, uh, that person did, hasn't, that customer hasn't gotten back to me in two interactions. Um, I'm going to do a quick call and say, hey, this is Mark. I want to make sure everything's been good about your experience. You texted, hi, do you have any questions I can answer for you? And uh, I can just imagine a customer uh, feeling uh, pretty blown away if you do it right, pretty blown away by like, whoa, this, this uh, company cares so much about the customer experience, they escalate another channel. And you can also imagine in a sales interaction uh, how that would be uh, the money. Absolutely. Yeah, I, th- I, I agree with James. Mobile phone numbers are super valuable. And you're right, Mark, whether it's texting them back or giving them a call, um, you know, something we don't realize, but um, when you, you know, if you try to uh, call someone, um, or excuse me, let's say if you're texting with someone and you identify yourself as, hey, this is Textile, and then I try to call that number later, I know at least with iPhone, it'll pop up and say, maybe Textile, right? So already you're kind of giving a little bit of caller ID to the phone call by using a text to initiate you know, the interaction, the first interaction. So it's interesting how texting someone and then following up with the phone call, if that's the preferred method, can really help identify who you are rather than just a random number as a cold call. Oh, that's so funny. You guys must be uh, following the Apple and Android developments like daily because as Apple changes their experience, um, it changes the experience that your customers get because that that simple trick um, seems like it's a best practice where mm-hmm. now whenever you, you, you have the first text message be a, hey, this is Textel, and that way you know that if they're an Apple uh, user, then that you know, you're going to have the maybe Textel come up for all the other conversations. I imagine you guys are looking at those sort of best practices all the time. Absolutely. Yeah, that is really one of the things that we're focusing on. One of our initiatives for the year is best practices is, you know, is in, in being a thought leader and a voice for 
for SMS within the space because there are so many things they change. And that's what businesses are, as they have said, hey, this is where we need to be, they're saying, and like I said earlier, and how do we do this? And so best practices is, is really a key thing that we have been focusing on developing and starting to publish and, and a big focus of our, of our year moving forward. And it's not just Apple, right? You have, you know, Google came out with text from Google search results, right, recently. So, you know, if your business number is text enabled, right from Google search, you, it's not just click to call, it's now, you know, click to text and, uh, you know, initiate a conversation right from the search page. Um, so there's a lot that's happening. You know, I know Instagram allows you to text now right off of, you know, the main page in Instagram, start an SMS with the, with the brand to interact. And so as, as you know, as, as the environment catches on to SMS, uh, we're, I, you know, we're positioned to really capture wherever the moves are. It feels like it is just opening up. Like uh, um, most of these interactions, I have never thought about until it happens and I click it and, you know, I get a text with a link and I go, cool. But I, but I love that, um, you know, text you know, is going to be able to be, you know, as rich as a call experience or as a, a, a chat experience. And that interactivity seems like a huge uh, piece of that. What do you guys think? Um, you know, and this is the question I ask on, on, on every podcast. Uh, what do you guys think the contact center environment is going to look like in 2030? And where do you think tax is going to fit into that? Hmm. Great question. Ahead, I don't think they're going to be called call centers anymore. <clears throat> Agree with that. You know, I mean, realistically, yeah, messaging will be such a big piece of it, right? This move to digital, the huge push that we see right now. You know, I, I think it'll be interesting to see, you know, the, the, the split between, you know, how many contact centers, the messaging and the voice um, and how that breaks down. But, uh, you know, I think messaging is going to make a significant play here in the next 10 years. As like James mentioned, things like RCS and ABC become more standard. If you could have a Facebook Messenger like interaction with any brand over SMS, no matter if you have an iPhone or an Android, I mean, that's freaking cool, you know, and that's going to take off. And that's the kind of stuff we're looking to do that really, you know, removes the need maybe one day to even ever pick up the phone and call a call center. Um, I don't know, James, what would you add to that? Yeah, I mean, I would think, I don't know if I'd go that far to say, but because I think there's always going to be, you know, James that, still likes you calling people. That. <laughs> I might put three dots after the, the words on my text. <laughs> no. <laughs> but no. Nah. But um, I, I, voice, is, voice is voice. Like we're having a conversation. We didn't do this over text, right? Because you can communicate so much more. You get the, you get tone and, and, and other things within a, a voice conversation that you struggle to get via SMS or, or via any messaging, right? Um, uh, so I, I think you're always going to have voice, but I think you're also going to see, as Mike was saying, a, a big increase in messaging because there are so many, vers it's so versatile. There's so many different things you can do with it on the front end, on the back end, it's interspersed in the middle of a customer journey. <clears throat> you know, as the customer journey, <clears throat> excuse me, goes along, there's maybe you started it with an SMS and then and then there's a little bit of voice and then you're touching base with them and reaching in with an SMS. And so there's this uh, use of digital beyond voice that as, as it grows. But the other thing I think, and you guys are, of course, Balto, this is, this is their thing, you know, with AI and, and you utilizing AI to inform in your case, like the sales agents or that, that, that interaction. But of course, I think AI is going to play a huge role in, in uh, the call contact centers moving forward. We see that from an SMS standpoint, it's there in voice. Um, it's, it's there whether it's actually interacting on behalf of the brand or supporting the agents in the, in the uh, contact center. I think AI is gonna play a big part of, of the things moving forward as well. You, you know, we did a, we did a fun um, little research study on uh, the average American and how many uh, days of their life they spend on hold with the call center. And it was something like 45 days is the average oh. that we spend on hold, right? <laughs> so like one of our, you know, internal things is like, let's give people some days back, you know? So hopefully by 2030, you know, we can cut that number down and we're spending much less time just sitting on hold, waiting to get through to a call center. 
Textile, reducing the hold time. <laughs> Textile, giving you your life back. <laughs> there you go. Days of your life. <laughs> uh, see, James, Mike, thank you guys so much uh, for coming on. Uh, really good to see you. And uh, let's go get some St. Louis barbecue soon. Sounds great, let's Mark. Let's do it. All right, Mark. Thanks. You Thanks for it, having us. Talk soon. All right. Bye. Take care.